Right, so I've got a live project here with Loop Cloud Drum added to a MIDI track. And I've loaded up this Blunt Kit preset from the Underground Hip Hop Pack. And I've muted a load of the melodic sounds. So we've just got the beats now, which are being sequenced using the sequencer actually on board on drum. But a better way to work might be to actually sequence these drums using MIDI notes on the track itself. So the way that I can export this information is by going to the export tab here, clicking on MIDI, and then render MIDI, and then just drag it out onto the MIDI track. Don't worry about importing any of the tempo and time signature information. Now I can close that. Uh, also turn the sequencer off now, because we don't need that anymore. And I'll just close the window temporarily. And something we might like to do down here in the piano roll is first of all, click fold here, which will get rid of any of the notes on the keyboard that don't have any notes on in the clip here. And also if I click here on the headphone switch, then it allows me to hear what drums are mapped to these keys here. So what I can do is click up here on the clip, copy it out a few times. So we've got a kind of eight bar loop here. And now I can just sort of come into different parts, like maybe here, hit Command E to split it off as its own little clip. Uh, and now I can just move around a few of these drums to create a bit of a fill here. It's quite nice. Let's copy that over and maybe do something a bit more exciting on the end here, a few extra snares. Cool, that'll do for now. So now we've got our kind of backing beats. Now let's switch over to Loop Cloud and start getting some more loops going with this. So first of all, I'm gonna add the Loop Cloud plugin to this MIDI track here. And once again, this is like a go-between between, between Live here and the Loop Cloud standalone app, which I've already got running. And now that I've added the plugin, you can see it says connected to Ableton Live in the corner. It's now locked to 100 BPM, to my project tempo. And any audio that I play from here is now going to root onto this track here. So what we could start off doing maybe is just searching under the tag Hip Hop. And what this will also do, if you have this switch here selected, or active, it will also show you at the top here recommended packs, so any of this sort of hip hop packs that are available. So you can scroll through, see what's here, maybe click on one that looks appropriate. And then you can drill down into the pack on this tab here. Once again, every time you do a search, you're getting separate tabs here. So just searching for hip hop, um, started a hip hop search on this tab, clicking on a pack, then created a new tab here for that pack. Um, and any additional searches I do will be on their own tabs alongside. Uh, so now on this tab for this pack, I could drill down into some of the different sounds by clicking on the tabs at the top here, or also using this search, which is new in Loop Cloud 6. So I could search for percussion and loops, and then just click on any to load them into the player at the bottom. And now when I click play in the player and also start up my live project, you'll hear these loops will sound in time with the beats from live. So some pretty nice sounds there, but let's start a new search for percussion loops. I'll just get rid of the products now. Loops. And this will search in 
all packs across the store and my library. But what I'm also going to do is narrow it down to hip hop. And I'm also going to match the tempo. So this is over in the auto audio filters tab, where you've got the BPM, which you can set manually, or click match tempo to set the range automatically to something similar to your project tempo, in this case, 94 to 106. Now let's check out some of these. When I click on them, you can see they'll just replace whatever's currently down here in the player and track one. That was pretty nice. Uh, if I want to go back and compare it to the previous one, I can click on that one again. Now, sometimes when you're doing a search for a particular instrument, you'll find you get a wide range of results. And in this case, we're searching for percussion, which as you can see, is a main category that contains all of these different sounds here. So whenever we search for percussion samples, we're actually searching for clicks, congas, cowbells, shakers, and everything here. So there's lots of different sounds. Now, of course, if we wanted to limit it to a few of these sounds, then we could just select their individual tags. But another way that we can go is to use the audio filters to narrow down the search. Now, firstly, I could, if I wanted to, specify a particular area of the frequency spectrum. Now, I can see from the samples here that some of them are blue, some are green, some are yellow, some are even uh, red in places. And if I go up here to the tone option, you can see this relates to this spectrum range that we've got here from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. And I should say that if I go to preferences, I have the full spectrum setting for multicolor waveforms here, which is only available with the dark themes. And this is particularly useful at immediately seeing the kind of content you've got here. So I can see that this is going to be a really high frequency loop. compared to something like this one, say. So obviously there's some symbols going on there, there's some high frequency content, but the majority of the energy of the loop is lying down in the lower frequency regions with those kind of toms and stuff. So what I can do is I can filter out certain frequencies from my results here by setting whatever range I like. So I might kind of limit it to the sort of low mid area, somewhere from sort of 400 hertz up to about 1k. So now they're all looking a bit more like that second loop I played there. So they're generally going to contain more kind of bongos and congas and some of the lower toms and stuff. And also when I do this, you can see up the top here, we get this new tone tag appearing. And this will change whenever I adjust the range here. So you can see now it goes from 287. And of course we can remove it just by clicking on the cross just like any other tag. But we're also getting quite a lot of variety here when it comes to how busy the loops are. Some of them are very busy like this one say, you know, other ones have a lot less going on. So I might come down to the rhythmic density here and possibly bring down the complexity a bit. but maybe not so simple. I don't want, you know, just the occasional hit here. Let's maybe go to sort of here. And if I wanted to, I could even come into the swing setting here and add a little bit more shuffle because we're not creating techno here. 
All right, so I think we might be on the right track here. Let's play through some of these. So I'm really liking this sample here, so I'm going to buy it for two points. And then I can either use the export button here to drag out the sample, or as I want the original sample, I quite like to just drag it from the results area there, which always just drags out the original sample. Drag that onto a new track here. And bring the level down. Copy it out. Nice. 